Hey loves, my name is Shannon and as promised, um, I'm going to show you all a tutorial for the airbrush effect that I created in Photoshop. So I would like to start off by showing you the end product first, just to give you an idea of how this works. If you are new to Photoshop, this might be a little um, intimidating. However, if you watch this video in like a 1.5 speed, uh, get an understanding of what it's doing and then go back and watch it at a slower speed like maybe uh, the what point seven five speed you'll be able to keep up with it a little bit better and get an idea of what's going on here so right now I have the same effect applied to three different text layers and I was able to achieve this with smart objects. So if I open this one up, let's say for instance, I open up the Innate Lab, I have my Starburst on a layer with the highlight. I have the color of the Starburst on a different layer. And the cool part with the smart object is that it looks like the text is completely merged here, but it's a smart object. I can double click it and double click the text here and I can change the text now I do want to ensure that it stays within this box simply because I don't want to have to change anything after the fact so I hit control T and then I size the window down from the corner and then if I try to exit out of this the smart object is going to notice that I made some changes and it's going to ask me if I want to save it if I hit yes these changes will propagate to the original file if I hit no then it won't affect the original file so I'm going to hit yes and when I go back to my original file it renders this new text so <clears throat> this is how I have it set up as far as the basic breakdown it has different effects it has a bevel and an emboss and I'll go through these different effects just to show you keep your eye on the your text as a matter of fact I'm gonna do control plus and zoom in and just keep your eye on the your text and I'll show you the different levels of this effect so just on this top layer we have a bevel and an emboss, and you can take it off in orange just to see what effect it has. We have a stroke. I'm just making sure I'm on the right layer right now. If I take the effect completely off, you'll see that I have that original green text from the smart object. Now, the reason why I made it like a bright green is just so that I remember if something wasn't showing through properly because if I had it black I might you know assume that my image was supposed to be black so I'm gonna turn these effects back on and then I'm gonna turn off all of the visibility and just show you one at a time <clears throat> oh let me step back just a second control minus just to zoom out just a little bit so you have your drop shadow I have a gradient overlay, then I have a stroke around the exterior of the text, and then I have the bevel emboss to, to make it look a little bit shiny and three-dimensional. So that's just that top layer. Now once you have a smart object, if you right click and duplicate that layer, it will also change the text or whatever you put you can put an image in that layer too it's not just for text so the text that I previously edited has now also propagated to this layer so you'll see your text is here too and this one is this middle glow so as a matter of fact I think I'm gonna name this while I'm here double click middle glow And then what I had initially done is just copy and pasted the uh, effect above. 
So it does have a bevel of emboss on here, but it's not necessary. So let me clean this up. We don't need all this. So I'm going to go to double click on my effect. I don't need that bevel and emboss on there. All I really need on there is an outer glow. So that's all that should be visible on this one, as you can see. So if I turn the first layer off and I'm only left with my second and third, then I can see that that second is that middle glow. So I'll turn that visibility off for right now, that layer, and let's focus on the last glow, which would be this group here. And I really don't even need it to be a group, so let me clean that up. And this is the image that I used for reference. I'll bring that to the top so I can show you later. Because we're going to use that when we get ready to recreate this entire effect from scratch. So not only am I showing you my master file, which is what I use now since I created the master file. I pretty much just create a version of this, um, save a new uh, copy of it so that I don't mess up my uh, original fonts and everything. And I play with this when I'm doing my on-the-spot t-shirt printing. Because for some reason, people just really love airbrushed effect lettering. Um, it's one of the questions that I get the most when it comes to printing on demand. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go to this last one. I do not need it to be a group, so I'm going to pull it out of this group so it's not confusing. And as I'm doing this tutorial, I'm literally uh, cleaning this file up so that I did have some requests to have uh, this file ready for people to purchase as a template. So I'm cleaning it up and using this as an excuse to do so. All right, so the final layer is this outer glow. So I'm going to rename this outer glow. All righty. So we have our outer glow, and it has a bevel and emboss on it that's not required because it's obviously in the background layer, so I'm going to take it off. And then this outer glow, which I will show you later, Instead of a diagonal line here for the glow, it actually has this, which one was it? There we go. So it has um, two peaks, and the two peaks represent where the color is going to show up. And where it has the valleys is where the color doesn't show now you can actually go on here and create your own little, you can create another peak, you can make it more sharp in different areas, you can bring the peak lower or higher, all of those things. Those are things you can have fun with on your own time, I'm pretty sure you can get lost in this program. Um, I just wanted to show you all how I was able to achieve that gap and then the glow. Alright, so I'm going to say OK on that one. So when I go back and look at what I have, and what I'm doing here is I'm just closing these arrows on the side. Um, if you extend these, you can see all of the effects that are applied, which I do recommend you expand them when you're trying to see it. But for purposes of looking at all these layers, I like to have them condensed so I can see more of the, um, of the layer titles. Okay, so I just simplified that. If I take everything else off, now we're going to build back on that. <clears throat> now my starlight, or my highlight, and my color starburst. Um, I have these layers linked right now. I really cheated because I created this one time. And uh, I'm going to undo that, Control Z. I'm going to select both the highlight and the color, and I'm going to choose this link. Because when I created them, I created them so that the highlight stays a little bit offset, but right on top of the color starburst. So I want to keep them together. If I link them, then obviously they move together. So I'm going to control T right now. Control T means to transform. 
and I'm just going to cheat. I don't want to create these starbursts every time, so I cheat all the time with this. I'm going to hold down my shift key so I can stretch this out and stretch it out in an odd way. If you don't hit the shift key on the new Photoshop, it will proportionally stretch, which is wonderful when you're stretching out pictures. And if you've ever stretched out a picture um, unproportionally, it looks gross. So I'm intentionally doing that so that it looks like it kind of hits this text a little bit better. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the idea is that you want it to come off the graphic a little bit. But depending on what your text is, it may or may not match up. And you can redo this layer if you like, but I have not had a complaint yet. Um, but yes, I'm going to show you how to create your starburst layer as well. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the difference real quick between the white and the color one. And now we're going to go ahead and add back our primary layer. Let's just call this the gradient. I was going to say that it was text, but it may not be text. Like I said, you can uh, double click inside of this and you might want to put, what could I put in there? Do you have anything? Okay, let's try that. This probably isn't going to be the best representation. I just want to show you that you can put an image in there, not just. Oh, this is another tutorial I'll be doing, um, creating your own bling graphics. This is supposed to be, it's made to look like a, a necklace charm that has all the diamonds and trimmed in gold. So let's say I did that and I still have my name there. I just made it invisible. I'm not going to totally delete that. I'm just giving a demonstration of how it can be a photo or an image and not just text. So it did the same effect to that image. And of course, if I were to take the gradient off of the top, then you would see through. And also remove the gradient there. And you can put images in there as well. As long as they were PNGs, transparent background, it could be a SVG um, image that you pull onto there. As long as it has a transparent background, the effects that we have set up right now would trace it out and do the same, uh, the same effect. And then we can go ahead and add our middle glow. And of course, we never took off our outer glow. And that's pretty much the same idea. But I'm definitely going to double click on the smart object, remove that image, and just make my text visible again when I hit X now or when I exit out. Yes, I'm going to tell it to save. And if you remember, I took my eyeball off of the gradient overlay. So now all I have to do is just click it again and make it visible. And that is how you would use this as a template. So from here forward, we're actually going to be learning how to do this without a template. I understand there are some people who may want the template because it gives them a little bit of a head start, but I have learned that creating things from scratch is the best teacher, so I would encourage you to do it. Um, however, um, I will make the template available for purchase um, as soon as I post this video, I just wanted to go ahead and get this video out first. Okay. So I'll show you our inspiration here. And let me control minus to zoom out just a little bit. And my suggestion for doing this is to literally go on Google and look up airbrush shirts and go ahead and pull something that really stands out to you because pretty much what we're doing is we are recreating the effects that we see that are handmade. All right, I'm going to go ahead and position this one. I'm going to take a really quick water break and I'll be right back. 